are day three at craft camp. How are you guys feeling? Good. Yeah? yeah. Are you ready to do some more crafting? Yeah. Yeah. Well, this project is maybe a little bit harder, but you're going to learn some great sewing skills here. So I'm giving you two days to make this project, and I'm going to show you all the tips and tricks on making a stuffy. For the faux flamingo stuffy, you'll need these tools and materials. First, we'll start with the pattern, and there's two pages of pattern and a sheet of instructions. We'll start with five different colors of felt in our pinks, yellows, and greens. And we have two colors of embroidery floss. We then have two little safety eyes and some polyfill. We'll be using the paper covered wire for inside of the legs. And for felt, we really like to use the fast grab tacky glue. I have my wire cutters, scissors, some clips, my embroidery needles, and then the needle threader. The first thing you'll do is start cutting all the felt pieces for your flamingo. And we'll start with the body. Here's a reference guide that shows you exactly which colors to cut out of each pattern. And let's go over the embroidery key. It says stitch type, here it would be blanket stitch, the color of the embroidery thread, and you can see these here, you can find them right here at the base of the embroidery thread. So this one says 3824, which is the lighter color. And then number of strands that you'll put through your needle, which is three. For the flamingo, you'll find two pages of pattern. There's the body, the beak, the legs, and then we have the wings and the feet. And then here are the extra pieces for the flower, which we'll cut out later. Go ahead and cut out all of these pieces. Remember to use your clips to hold your pattern onto your felt as it will make it a lot easier. So here's all the felt cut. That took a little time, but it's gonna yeah. be worth it, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So the first thing we're gonna do is glue the beak onto the head so that we can put the eyes in and then we'll sew things together so that we can put the stuffing inside. So the hardest part right now is getting the sewing done and we'll take a little time to learn how to do that. So let's go ahead and do the beak first. We're gonna take our tacky glue and we'll need to clip the end off just like before because this is a brand new bottle. I'm gonna use my wire cutters this time, it works really well. That way we don't have to dole up our scissors. And you'll wanna remember that we have a left side and a right side, so I would do that right now. Make your left side and your right side. You can do either way, as long as you have two opposites. And then here are the beaks, and you'll go ahead and put those in place. They'll sit right underneath the head, and you wanna make sure you don't cover up the eye hole. So I'm just putting a little tiny bit of this glue onto the edge, and then pressing it down to really make the fiber stick into the fiber. And don't worry, if you get a little bit of the white glue on top, it will dry clear. And do that on the second beak as well. And then I'm gonna let those dry. Let's go ahead and set those aside, and while we're letting those dry, we're going to assemble our legs. Let's make the flamingo legs. As you can see, there's some wire inside so that you can bend them. I'll use this brown wire, and what I'll do first is roll out the wire to lay it flat. And I'll only need two pieces of wire that are just a slight bit longer than these pieces of felt. You might need your parent to help you cut the wire. So I'll measure it, the length of the felt, and give it just about another quarter of an inch and then cut that with my wire cutters, and I'll need two of those. The next thing we'll do is glue the wire inside of the felt. And since I'll be sewing the top of the felt onto the side of the bird, I want to leave a little bit of space with no wire. And then we'll be gluing the feet onto the base of the leg. So I'll leave the wire hanging up there 
and we'll glue the feet right onto that. So I'll make this as straight as I can. And I'll run a long line of glue. And I'm using the Fast Grab Tacky Glue. Place my wire there again, leaving some space at the top. And then roll the wire like a burrito. You have to tuck it and roll as you go. More glue on the second side. And then roll it as tightly as you can. You can always go back and tighten it a little bit more later. So the best thing is to get it completely closed so your glue is not exposed. You'll see it gets a bit messy and then maybe roll it like this on the table. See how that makes it nice and tight? I can see this is too loose up here so I'll unroll it a bit, tighten that up, and then close it up. And then I'll let that dry. We make we make a good pair, huh? Mm -hmm. Good team. Now you can just squeeze it and get it all in place. Okay. Once we have our legs ready, how are you doing over I'm here? Pretty good, I think. Okay. I just need a roll. Rolling it like a burrito, yeah. and that's yeah. a good idea too. You could roll it on the table like that. That'll Mine get it nice and smooth. Round. I like that. Mine are pretty round. Okay, that looks great. All right, so the ends that have the wire poking out, that's where we're going to add the feet. Use your clamps to hold your pattern to your felt, and you can probably cut two layers at a time if your scissors are sharp enough. Once the legs are dry, we'll go ahead and add on our feet. There's two pieces for each foot. I'll apply quite a bit of glue to one foot and spread it around just a bit. You can use your finger to spread the glue all the way to the toes. Then place the wire that's sticking out of the leg onto the foot, but you'll want to overlap the leg felt with the foot. Like that. Whoops. I'll add just a bit more glue on top of the felt and on top of the wire, and then I'll sandwich the other piece of felt right over the top of those and just use your fingers to press it all together so that everything lines up. Make sure and press the felt together really tightly so that the glue will get into the fibers of both sides. You'll set that down to let it dry 
and do the same thing to the other foot. And now they're ready to sew on the body. I wonder if there's any meat on these legs. I don't think so. No? Okay. They're, they're not like skinny. turkey legs? Yeah. yeah. Not fat legs. Probably, really they probably strong. don't taste like chicken, I'm guessing. Bad. Yeah. Once you've cut all of your pieces, there's a few things that we'll want to glue together before we start assembling the bird. Remember that we need a left side and a right side. We'll start with the beak and you'll just simply glue the edge of the top of the beak onto the back of the head and sit and let that dry. Then we have two sets of wings. I've laid one on top of the other. You can see how it lines up on this side and then you can see the lower feathers on the bottom side. I'm going to pull this back and add some glue just right to that top corner. Close it back up again and press it together and let that dry. Do that on both sides. We're gonna make our flower at the end. The next thing that you'll do is add these little safety eyes and it's really quite simple. In your kit, you'll find two sets of safety eyes. We have the fronts and then the backs. You'll slide one of the safety eyes right through the hole and then take one of the backs and you'll make sure that the flat side goes towards the felt and just slide it down with your fingers. You'll hear it popping as you go along. Slide it down so that you can see three of the ridges. Then have your parent help you cut the back off. You don't want to cut it too tight or else it will pop right off. Make sure there's at least one ridge. And that way, you don't have quite so much poking inside of the little head. Do the other side. Same thing. You may want to wear safety glasses, but definitely make sure that you point it in a direction away from anyone who might be standing there. And that's how you attach safety eyes. The next thing we're going to want to do is sew the leg onto the body. The next step is to sew the legs onto the base of the body. So I've threaded my needle with three strings. You can go back and review how to do that. And I have a knot at the end of my string. Now I'm going to place the leg about the center of the body and one inch up. We need to make sure that we stitch it far enough up so we can sew the two pieces of the bottom together. We need some space for that. So I'll hold it with my fingers and I'll start in the back. So I'm holding it really tight with my fingers here and I'll turn it over, slide my needle through and pull the thread all the way to the knot. And we'll make one stitch and you can see I'm going right beside the first stitch. So we're going to make a dash and we'll do that three times.
So there's three stitches. I'll turn it over and this is how I'll knot it off. I'll slide my needle in and out of the back of the felt, just like that. Wrap the thread one, two, three times, and then pull it through the needle. Make sure the knot stays tight all the way towards the felts. I'll set it down and I can use my other fingers to help that and make it really, really tight. Then just use your scissors and snip off the back of the thread. And I'll do the same thing to the other leg. Before I start my second leg, I'll need to make for sure and tie a double knot onto my string again. I can measure them side by side to make for sure that I'm placing them exactly the same. Looks like this one needs to go right there and hold it with my fingers and then I know exactly the position. And now we're ready to start sewing the body together. Now it's time to start sewing the flamingo together and we will begin with the beak. I already have the lighter color on my needle. All I need to do is make a double stitch at the end. I'll place the beaks together. You can also use your clips right here to keep everything in place. You can use more than one if you want to. We're going to start underneath the chin. So I have those together and I'll put my needle through just one side so that I can bury my knot inside. You can see the knot and I'll just make sure that's tucked inside. I'll make my stitch straight across and back through the first hole, then loop my needle underneath, and start my first stitch. When you're doing a blanket stitch, practice making your stitches the same distance apart. So it looks like I want to make my stitch you can see how far it is from the first one and that will be my guide. So I've ran my needle straight across through both layers of felt. I'll take the tail and loop it underneath the needle and then pull it through again. I'll do a few of these and then I'll show you why it's called a blanket stitch. So you can see from the side all of the even stitching and then if you look at the base there's a line of thread that goes right along the edge and that makes a really pretty finished stitch and that is what they call the blanket stitch because you would use this to edge a blanket. I'll go ahead and finish my whole beak all the way around and stop where the felt changes color. As you stitch around, make for sure that you're only using one layer of the thread and that the second one, your tail, isn't getting caught because then that your threads will get thicker. So as you go, if it becomes a little bit more even at the end, you'll just gently pull it out. It 
If you feel like you've made a mistake, you can always fix it. Just pull the needle off the thread and then use your needle to pull the stitches out very gently until you get back before where you feel like you want to start over. Here I am at the end and I want to change thread colors. So I'll go ahead and do the same type of knot. I run the needle through both layers and wrap this around three times and then pull it through. But I don't want to trim that tight. What I want to do instead is leave a longer tail and then tuck that into the inside and that will secure it inside so that you won't see strings poking out. So I'll go ahead and change my thread and we'll keep going around the head. I've also clipped the neck and the back so that everything stays in place as I stitch over the head. So again, tuck that, the, the thread from the last one in and run your needle through one layer so that this tail will also be tucked inside. And I'll just continue doing the blanket stitch all the way around the head and back the neck. Since I'm working over these eyes, I'm going to add one more clip right here just to make sure I hold everything in position. When you're stitching around the edge of the neck and all the way around the body, you want to make sure and keep your stitches fairly even and not so far apart because once you start adding the polyfill, you don't want that to be popping through the seams. I'm going to continue this stitch all the way down the back of the neck over the back and just around the tail. And just to remind myself where to stop, I'll put this clip and we want to leave an opening at the base so that we can put the poly through. But before we even do that, we'll come back here and start stuffing the neck and stitching back this direction. So let's go back and finish all this and then I'll meet you there. I'm running out of thread and I don't have enough to get all the way to the clip. You'll want to keep an eye on it so you have enough thread to tie a knot. I'll simply slide the needle through both layers, right along that stitch, loop it three times, and then pull it into a tight knot. Rather than cutting my thread, all the way to the felt, I'll go ahead and leave at least an inch or two. Tuck that back in two between the felt. And then once I start my needle again, I'll just keep going. If you make a stitch and forget to wrap your string around the needle, go ahead and just drop your string right through that loop and that will still work. So I've stitched all the way to the clip. I'll take that off and I'll go ahead and make my last stitch and then tie a knot just to hold this, the thread into place. But I won't cut this thread because I'll come back and finish using it, but I'll slide off my needle and keep it attached. Now we'll start stitching this direction and little by little stuff the polyfill into the beak. So I'll re-thread my needle with a brand new thread. So I have my thread ready, the knot is tied, but before I start stitching, I'm going to add the polyfill into the beak. This is a great place to use your pencil. I'll take just a little tiny bit of polyfill. and very gently tuck that into the head and loop it back inside of the beak. And this is where you can use your pencil to get it all the way to the tip. I'm adding a little bit more and that feels pretty good. So now I'll start stitching.
I've stitched right under his neck and around the curve, and now I'll want to add some more polyfill. It works best on this part to add a little bit at a time because it's a pretty tight fit. And you can feel with your fingers that it's starting to fill up the top of the head. But you can also use your pencil to nudge it along. Okay, now I can add that polyfill back in. And you can see how nice and tight these stitches are and you're not seeing any of the polyfill pop through and that's exactly how you'll want yours to look. Since I'm adding the polyfill and it's making the pieces move apart, I'm going to go ahead and add some clips just to hold everything together. I place this clip to know I want to stop right here and then I can put all the polyfill into the body. And just like the other side, I'll go ahead and tie a knot here. I don't feel like I need to remove my needle, and I think I have enough thread to finish it, so I'll end up tucking this piece right up inside. You can trim that back a bit if you want to. And I'll tuck it inside the tail, and then start adding the polyfill. That looks about right. I'm feeling all the way from the back to the front to make sure it's evenly dispersed. Maybe there's a little bit more right at the tip here. I'll use my pencil. And put some more there. And I'll use my clips to hold this closed. This will make it a lot easier to sew. Okay. Tell me these clips were brilliant.
go ahead and tie your knot and then clip that thread really close to the body. And now we're ready to put on the wings. I'm almost done. I just have to sew a bit. Okay. If you have any of the fluff sticking out, you can clip it off with your fingers or pull it out with your fingers. Sometimes it's easier just to clip it. Mm -hmm. That's what I had to do because it had thick whiskers earlier. I have a few whiskers around. You can take a little dab of glue and put them on the whiskers and then you can kind of dab them against your, see I have one right here, I'll show you. So to help your whiskers not show, I just take a little dab of glue on my finger and then okay. I'm just gonna place it right up against here. See? And it's then it's hidden. I'm out stitches. This looks so good, you guys. Mm -hmm. Now we're ready to put our wings on. So make sure you get the right side on the right side. And we'll want to put enough glue across the top, maybe this much, I'll show you, so that when you place it onto your body, it will stay. So I'm going to make kind of a little bit of a half moon right here at the top curve and then right across here. I don't want to glue the whole wing down because I want to make it so it can still flap like a wing. And I'll place it right along the seam, right there. And then just hold it into place for just a minute. Press it, press it tight. Okay, do the same on the other side. Gluey hands again. I know. And then we're just gonna yeah. squeeze the fibers together. So it looks like this. Looks and then good. I'll set her aside and let her dry while we make the flower. Yeah, that looks good. And then we'll just let her dry. I like it. It looks so cute. Here are the four pieces to make the flower and I'll show you how to assemble it. We'll use our tacky glue. Start with the petals. And you'll see just a little tab right here on the edge of this first petal. Add just a little bit of glue. Maybe a little less than that. And then you'll fold it over, almost into a triangle, and then overlap. And use your fingers to press down really tightly. Sometimes it falls apart, so you'll add the glue again and try it one more time. That should be enough glue. And I'll press that together with my fingers and then set it aside and let it dry. Add a line of glue onto the base of the center and fold it in half. I'll press that together, then add some more glue, and very carefully roll it up. And I'll squeeze that tip together. Put some glue right on the base. and carefully slide that into the center of the flower. I'll put some glue just at the tip of one leaf and overlay the second, and then add a triangle of glue on the base of the leaves, and I'll glue that right over the seam of the flower. And when I'm ready, this can be glued on the top of the flamingo's head or right on top of its wing. That's so cute. And then you can decide exactly where you want it to be sitting on her head, or you can put it on her neck or on her, wherever you want it, and just glue it right into place. And she's done. Look at that. That looks so good. Doot, doot. Here we are. 
Three flamingos. Should we do a flamingo ballet? Sure. Do a little stop animation. <laughs>